Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this uh, open air provide community call. Uh, it's a great pleasure to um, to run this call number 15. <laughs> and it's always a great pleasure to to have you on and to have you with us in this call to present some of the novelties uh, that we have in the provide them um, in the provide service uh, or in the open air services or functionalities uh, that are interesting useful for for content providers for repository managers uh, query system managers not the repository managers so it's a it's a it's really a great pleasure let's um, so our focus today will be on on uh, on um, on a novelty, in fact, that we have available currently in beta in the validator for you to test, I will we will also demonstrate that uh, for you to be aware of this uh, adapt, uh, adaptation of the fair data maturity model indicators in our in our provide in our open air validator. Uh, I think this will be an interesting. Uh, facility uh, and there is my colleague from Bielefeld University of Bielefeld will detail this but the, the agenda for today is in fact so to dedicate some time to this work that we have done uh, mainly our team from, from Bielefeld University together with some other colleagues uh, we have done an, an, an adaptation of, 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 of the fair data maturity model indicators that are um, an output from the Research Data Alliance uh, in, in our validator. And we can have a discussion around uh, around this. So um, I hope that this will be interesting. Um, later on, I will also present and, and share with you where it is in the validator, in the beta version uh, of the provide service. But um, let's now proceed with this, with this presentation. Just um, um, one highlight, in fact, that is the, the novelty, it's about the fair assessment in, in, in beta, so now it's available in, in, in Validator. We, we were discussing a bit in, in the provide team if we wanted to have in production with a kind of beta st uh, stamp, but we decided as we have this workflow now running quite well in, in open air infrastructure where we put everything in, in the beta, um, environment of our services we have at the end decided to do the same for this new functionality of the validator so you can test this in in beta i will tell you how and then you can uh, you can um, you can contribute also for the, with some feedback and test with your uh, own repository etc uh, i would like also to highlight um, because every time we have these calls there, is, there are some newcomers um, um, I would like also to highlight that we have the, um, then the last call was dedicated to how open air services are contributing to EOSC and I know that this is quite relevant for some of you. Uh, the presentation was done by Paulo Mangi, the technical uh, director of open air. Recordings and slides are available so we can share the, the links here in the chat and you can check it if you were not able to, to join this call. I think this is important for you also to clearly understand that the, your participation in PROVIDE will also um, um, allow you to, to be part uh, in a way of, of, of YOSC. Okay? Two reminders that you are already aware and that we, but as, as this is something sometimes also important for, for some newcomers. One is about the need to subscribe to receive the metadata enrichments. You are aware of this, but sometimes people don't, 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 don't catch it so well. So we, now we, we did some, um, in, in the recent months, we did some changes in the, in the way that we are exposing metadata enrichments. Um, the broker events are generated. We just show, present a sample of, of 100 events in the, in the, in the dashboard in order for you to receive all you need to subscribe you can filter of what, what you want a specific event or with a specific dates and then you subscribe and you will receive we are sending quite um, in, a, in, a, in a very good um, uh, periodicity the, the notification so uh, we are running the, and updating the broker events 
uh, and uh, for sure you we are aware that you have already received uh, every month at least one one notification with with new with new events of course depending on what you have uh, subscribed um and if there is already uh, if there is uh, if there are new events or not the other thing is that we don't have uh, novelties about the registration process for Cree systems but we we are working on that and for sure we'll uh, allocate time to this activity in the coming months but for you to be aware if you are coming from this area or if you are uh, related with any Cree system be aware that the Cree systems um, we can register currently in the open air infrastructure uh, but uh, in, in the near future we will have a, 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 a a process of registration in open air and we will use the 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 DRIS, the directory from Eurocris to to become the authoritative source for the registration process so be aware of that so in order to have your CRIS system in open air you need to register it, uh, in, in in DRIS from 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 Eurocris so i think this is important uh, for you to to know um, this is not available now in provide in the registration process but will be available soon as we did a project with Eurocris in order to prepare the directory to communicate let's say to simplify with uh, with open air so we will present this later but related with the first novelty in beta you you will see if you access beta dot uh, provide dot open air dot you uh, you will see this um, this new uh, box in the in the validator functionality for the fair assessment and uh, you can play with this so let's present this later and now uh, I, I i will also just uh, because i didn't put it here but i want to say something we are a bit late on that but uh, uh, we don't have i know that some of you are expecting for the multi-user access some of you uh, have already requested that we have a functionality to for you to be able to give permissions to other person, not only one login as a manager of the repository this is not ready yet unfortunately we have some delays but uh, so it's in our in our to-do list. Uh, every every two weeks, we remind ourselves about the need. But this is related with other authentication services in, internally in open air, and it's not so uh, easy to 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 solve. Okay, Andreas. So now my colleague Andreas. So Andreas, you can also present yourself, but. Um, will run this presentation about this fair, this verification <laughs> of, of your content provider uh, in open air. So uh, the floor is yours, Andreas, and many thanks for your availability to run this presentation. <laughs> thank, thank you, Peter. Um, good afternoon also from my side. So um, yes, today we have a um, topic about the verifications uh, of our guidelines and um, um, focus in this community call for um, the literature guidelines or I will uh, come a little bit later to you with this topic. Uh, my name is Andreas Czerniak from Bielefeld University Library in Germany and in the face of open air advance uh, we are leading um, the work package uh, and task for the guidelines um, not only the guidelines that i present now um, but also the others and um, under uh, in uh, during this phase uh, we are working on um, the verification that's our uh, what we call it um, because our uh, guidelines are um, come from 10 years ago and uh, we will check uh, the elements that we have in the guidelines and 
recommendations there this in a moment so my topic topics um for the presentation today is to give a short overview um, about the guidelines and especially for the uh, institutional and thematic guidelines name mostly name called as literature guidelines and some fundamentals here um, and uh, what is new in the guidelines in the process uh, in the last phase we are working on some um, um, up, uh, to updating these guidelines and not only on the fair process uh, but only on something uh, related to the guidelines and I will present this uh, also here and after this um, I'm presenting the verification process and uh, last but not least the live demo um, from better provide an overview so as you know mostly um, the landscape of the uh, repositories are quite diverse so um, at the edge today we have institutional thematic repositories and um, during the last years and since there are something more repositories data repositories, journal uh, repositories from publishers, and also uh, software repositories and other research products. And we see a lot of um, potential in the uh, current research information systems. And for all these kinds of repositories, um, we have uh, guidelines in the um, uh, from open air but um, these repositories represents also different type of resource types and what we see is uh, resource types in the repositories for literature articles preprints for data sets um, also clinical files here um, so for software research products and um, newly for projects, funders, organization units, instruments and equipment. So if we map these repositories to the re uh, research output types that we see here, well, we found that the institutional and thematic repositories covers mostly all of things <laughs> in the meantime so not only literature uh, which we started from but also the data sets uh, software and other research products the, only the CRIS systems are uh, have all entity types um, in there and um, additionally to the four uh, search type output types. Um, there are also information about projects, funders, persons, organization units, instruments, um, and all with uh, persistent identifier linked in. The, if we take a look into the other repositories and um, the research output there, uh, for data repositories, they are mostly data sets and literature at the moment. For journal publishers, mostly uh, literature and uh, so on. If we come to our uh, actual guidelines that we are focused on today is uh, on the institution and thematic repository guidelines and this covers all these four sets of research outputs. These gui the guidelines have uh, as I said before um, an evolution and starts in uh, 2010. In 2010 there was um, the first version of the literature guidelines um, published 
and the work behind is starting in 28, 29, and um, coming from the driver project before OpenAI starts. After two years, um, the, fir uh, the first revision of the guidelines um, was made, and um, there's also seen that our guidelines for data are uh, important. So in 2012, there are also published literature guidelines and guidelines for data archive repositories. If we see um, the years after, um, there are another version of literature guidelines, version three. There's also a version for data guidelines and um, from this evolution, we know, okay, literature is not the only ones in the repositories uh, yet, and we should uh, revise our guidelines to an institutional and thematic repository, or guidelines for institutional and thematic repositories. It's called version four, um, and mostly named as literature guidelines version four, but that's not really true anymore. It's um, a mix of uh, from these resources that we've seen before. And uh, in 2018, we or Open Air uh, revised the content acquisition policy. Until 2018, Open Air covers only open access um, articles. And uh, with the new uh, content acquisition policy, um, open air uh, collect and harvesting open access content, but also non-open access content. So it's uh, open, the, uh, open here to the wider world. In the same year, 2018, um, it uh, was in a revision of the Chris Arif guidelines published. And both are uh, now the actual ones uh, of guidelines that we have. And we are in the phase to revise these um, in the last year and also this year and uh, updating the guidelines for institutional thematic repositories, but also the data archive guidelines and the guidelines for CRIS managers. But we focus today on uh, the institutional and thematic repository guidelines. These guidelines, mostly called as literature guidelines, um, based on Dublin Core and data sites Metasema format. It's uh, des uh, described uh, publications in text, uh, for textual and uh, for data publications, have, an, have controlled vocabularies. Um, and you can see here a screenshot of the application profile, which I um, don't go into depth now, um, but you can see it in, on Synodo or at guidelines.openair.eu. And um, we are in the phase to updating uh, the la uh, latest guideline version for institutional and repository um, and we are in the states of uh, the re release candidate one for the version for one. Um, we have made some changes. We have um, some minor changes. And uh, the first one is to, namely to um, include fair, and um, uh, the reference to the RDA 
uh, fair data majority uh, working group output here to our guidelines. So as you've seen, we are started in 2010 with the guidelines with mostly to um, focus on open access, on uh, finding articles, for accessing articles on open access and so on. So uh, this is not mentioned yet in the guidelines, um, but uh, we will see we have this in the, in the guidelines um, since 2010 roundabout. So this is also an adoption, uh, an adoption of the guidelines to the RDA fair data principles here. Um, I will come back in a minute to this topic this important topic. The other one is uh, we are hands um, something for aggregators. In the last years we see um, on the OIE PMH interface some gap um, in the identification of repositories and together with uh, our partner um, and infrastructure La Referencia or we um, and develop a proof of concept to identify uh, to identify repositories in the provenance element. So, if you are familiar with it, this or um, this is uh, the about element, the about note from the WebPMH interface, and the provenance element in this go not really in, in, in depth here, but we um, add some uh, two simple elements for repository ID and repository name. Uh, repository ID is an important one here um, to identify uh, which is uh, the repository that comes um, that are behind this record and um, we choose and discuss here the um, identifier for open door or also for re 3 data um, and the uh, identifier from this registry. Also can it uh, uh, enhance with from, from other repositories. So the first element is the repository ID with the registry and uh, followed by the identifier of this registry. The repository name is nice to have and good to have in some cases to identify uh, for human, uh, which are the repositories behind this identifier. This was one uh, enhancement and proof of concept for aggregators. And the other uh, enhancements that we are, have uh, done in the last months are for contributor rules. We are um, rely on uh, the credit uh, attack ceremony. Um, to add more rules of contributors here. Um, this is in, in line, uh, also in line with uh, other uh, initiative uh, like uh, ORCID. ORCID uh, is also integrate the cr uh, credit taxonomy here for uh, the rules. We also extend and uh, refine this the descriptions uh, from of the elements and attributes and also um, have mo more and hopefully better uh, examples for uh, the elements here. And uh, we see also that we should update links um, that we have in the guidelines um, 
like for uh, crosser funders, the domains change and links change and so on. This was updated also in uh, this revision. So um, I will share afterwards uh, the link for the guidelines. They will in the pre uh, presentation too. I see it in the chat here, the question. So first of all, I've come to the verification process. Um, verification, of our guidelines um, that we have. It's based on the uh, RDA Fair Data Maturity Model, specification and guidelines. It's published in June 2020, and um, it covers the findable, the accessible, the interoperable, and the reusable. And the specification and guidelines um, share an excellent feed for the identification how fair is uh, the elements that we have. And here in the overview on the right side, uh, you see we are um, the overview of our analysis that we are done and uh, that, we, that I present in a moment in detail. Mm -hmm. um, uh, findable, uh, it's very grateful, accessible that we have something to do or um, that we are on a discussion at the moment, um, interoperable and reusable. So in detail, findable. Um, the RDA pre, uh, share an Excel sheet with um, identical, uh, identify, uh, fair identity, identi um, and um, we go through these sheet and um, map these uh, to the elements that we have are in the guidelines version four. Um, for um, you see here, this is important also for the validator. Um, here, the identi uh, identifier um, on the in the left column and um, the description and priorities um, met in the guidelines or not and um, what we have done here. We do this for all of these identifiers in um, the street and we see all very fine we can ha we have this all one in, uh, we are fit the findable uh, with our guidelines, um, with resource identifiers or implicit via our EPMH interface identifiers uh, and so on. So if you have, uh, if we have I think your data source, your repository via our EPMH and um, you uh, have these identifiers regarding our guidelines version four. Um, you are 100% um, findable. Perfect. <laughs> so these um, analysis and evaluation uh, have we done for all the fair elements and it's uh, the same procedure um, for accessible. Um, you see here the identifier, the description of the identifier priorities and fits in the guidelines or not. And um, it is the scope of our guidelines or not. And the result is uh, presented here on the right side. So there are some gaps that we have in the guidelines and we uh, discuss these 
uh, gaps? How can we um, mention this in the guidelines? Something is not directly under control of the guidelines. Um, something is um, in the control of open air, but not really in the guidelines. So we are in the discussion phase at the moment um, for, uh, on the one hand, for better understanding these um, fair principles for the guidelines. As I see here, the, um, the challenge is to have these, um, to, to ad adapt these guidelines uh, from the data, for a fair data majority model from the RDA to the uh, literature part, or not only literature, not only um, institutional and thematic repositories. So this is a challenge. Then, then we have not only um, data in it, uh, we have also articles, we have also software as we've seen before. So this is um, that we um, map, would like to map in our analysis and see some gaps here. Um, it's something like mostly isn't, uh, are the gaps in the guidelines are not mentioned um, regarding the, the data. Um, here's an example. Um, for the uh, data that we see here, the gap is uh, not applicable for the guidelines. Data is accessible through an access protocol that supports authentication and authorization. So this is not really in um, under control of the guidelines. Uh, we cannot check these ones uh, through the guidelines. And um, at the moment, we think that this is uh, not, should not be part of the guidelines and uh, could not be mentioned there. But we have this in the principles. And um, this, we have done this analysis and evaluation for interoperable. Yeah, something that we are discuss at the moment for uh, for the elements uh, for I. Um, you see, uh, you see this analysis here, and um, the last one is reusable. Same thing here um, that we have that we fit. A lot of for of the reusable for like license and so on. Uh, metadata is machine readable or understandable, um, but not all. Not all is mentioned here, um, and we are in in the discussion to make it more fair and make it and describe this more. At the, on the element um, level. The conclusion that we have from uh, this verification process is um, that um, it is that is possible to uh, make an adoption, adaptation of the guidelines to the RDA data fair data principles. Um, and we see that the guidelines that we have at the moment are primarily fair. So um, it's not overall, because on the, uh, the, the uh, sections of, of data and um, accessible uh, access of uh, data sets, and um, but in most cases, uh, we fit to the fair principles for um, from the RDA. And um, as 
as seen in the slides, as you've seen in the slides before, the evolution of the guidelines is also key. So uh, we are under, under, at the moment under the discussion um, to um, um, go forward on the guidelines regarding the fair and other um, sections that we have. And um, for this, this is important to um, modify the guidelines over the years and uh, fit it to the reality of uh, the repository world, information system world here. The references, um, the new guidelines, or uh, the latest version that we are working on is um, at the read the docs. You see here the link, and I see the link is also shared by Paolo. Thank you. Um, and examples and schemas uh, are available at GitHub. At GitHub, there's also an issue checker that we use for um, feedback channels. You can make a feedback on our guidelines that we have directly on read the docs. It's, um, there's an, this is possible, but uh, this requires also um, a look in, in the annotation service of, uh, read, the, of uh, read the docs. And uh, you can make the um, uh, annotations and comments directly on the latest uh, guideline pages here. The other thing is to uh, create an issue at GitHub under the guidelines repository, guidelines repository. For this, you need also a GitHub plugin. The last one is to um, comment our uh, Google document without any credentials. Um, and um, there you, in the Google document, you see also some discussions and links to um, related issues in, in GitHub and so on. So um, you have here an overview about uh, a discussion about the new version of the guidelines here. So, um, Pedro, would you like to take over and give you the floor to you to better provide to present or should I go forward to and you present better provide and the fair assessments um, afterwards? Yes, yes. Thank you, Andreas. Many thanks. So I, I can proceed just in order to allow people then to, to test and to run some tests and to for sure they will have doubts. I think this is um, a lot of information. I understand that some of the the, the participants of this call are uh, have already a very good knowledge about the the, the fair uh, maturity indicators. Some others don't have. So I think it's important to have some time. All this presentation is available for you. You can check the details of the of the fair indicators. Uh, but let's. Um, uh, I was giving some time, some wording in order to Paula make me presenter. Uh, but um, so I, I will just uh, check with you. So. Um, if you don't have access to beta, so just go to to beta uh, dot uh, provide dot opener dot you, and uh, and you may have access to 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 beta. If you if you don't have, you can you can put it in the chat, and uh, we will make sure that you can have access uh, to this to this version. Okay, um, you will see in the in the validator this new box here to perform a fair assessment on your metadata um, and you will be allowed to do to do that I was running some tests just before this this is something new <laughs> so I was running some tests so here is where you have uh, this functionality functionality available 
you can run some tests. Uh, in, put here the the the, the Oray IPM agent uh, URL for for your the interface of, of your repository uh, and run the 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 test. So I'm, I'm just performing some tests. I, I have already here some in the validation history. So but you can you can run this test. Uh, what you will be able to see here in this fair assessment is the mainly the rules that uh, we that um, Andreas have, have, have presented uh, that we are able to test as as, as you saw uh, some of the um, of some of the fair indicators as well are not possible for us to 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 check uh, so you can you can run this um, you can select or just have them all selected uh, as this is the same for the other for the other guidelines and then here you can perform in all records or just select uh, the number of records just to have a kind of, of sample uh, and you or, or you can also check if, if you want to to check some of the, the specific sets that you have in your repository and perform the um, the validation so for like for like for all the other validations so you receive a, an email i was doing no tests during the presentation of andres just for you to see you receive an email saying that um, one email saying that the validation started and another email that the validation uh, finished and you can then browse in the history the, the, the validation so you will see it in the validation history if it is already there so as you can see i have several um, validations here so all jobs that i have submitted some of them are uh, unsuccessful others are successful <laughs> some fail so um, i have so you can then you can check the status here in the in these tabs so the ongoing uh, those that have failed uh, and those that are successful and then from the successful is like the other the, for the other situations you can um, you can test you can test so you can uh, check the where are the um, the errors so we have here a first kind of overview of the results for the uh, for the 100 i i, I did a um, a test of for a, a sample of 100 uh, records uh, and then you can identify clearly the, the uh, where we have where you you may have uh, errors okay and then the errors are identified in um, specific records and you can check the, the records of course here is where it comes the um, the dots that we can clarify and that you, you you we may need to to provide you some support or you may need to understand better what we have in the in the indicators uh, here we have some errors about um licenses if licenses is explicit in the in the metadata record or not um, if uh, if uh, there is a specific representation of a standardized uh, format this so there are some errors that you can see that you can go to the to the record like for the other uh, situations i understand that then you may have some some doubts but this is the way that it works and it's the the way that the other validator also works i think it's now what is interesting so we are in a better environment we are in this phase of um, receiving your feedback uh, as andrea stated i think what is relevant here for us is that we are um, sorry I just want to stop sharing. Um, what we really want here is to to provide a service. I think it's an added value service uh, to assess this um, the fairness uh, of your your um, data source of your repository against well established uh, indicators from from RDA. Um, and then you, we can also collect your feedback and make it useful, uh, make it really useful 
receive your feedback. So I think all the links to to contribute uh, directly in uh, in uh, so we have Andreas just for clarification we have one Google document where people can uh, uh, comment and uh, but they can also directly in the in the guidelines uh, comment make comments. yes there are uh, three uh, feedback tunnels so um can give us feedback through the read of docs uh, functionality of annotations um, but we see this um, uh, this requires um, login and um, then we set up a uh, feedback document on Google directly so without credentials you can give us uh, your traditions and um, for uh, topics in the guidelines so, and um, we share this information on the fair assessment and the functionalities of uh, the validator that we have uh, first with you um, today. So to see also how uh, fits the validator and the roots that we, ha uh, that, uh, we have in the last years, um, our needs regarding fair and um, how can we, um, use this functional functionalities um, for the con um, continuous validation of repositories also. So if we um, have this functionality established in better provide and um, you see here uh, only five or six rules that we implement at the moment and we mm -hmm. implement uh, more um, then we can also um, have these function functionalities in the continuous validation of data sources and uh, use all the uh, features that open air and provide have so um, yes. yes so we just wanted to share this with you in this community call in order for you to be aware of this work we'll be aware of this added value um, functionality from 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 open air provides if you have questions you can you can ask i'm sorry pedro there's a question in the in the minutes so mm -hmm. i just i just uh, put it for andreas so okay. if you want i can read it or not. so okay. jordan Jordan asked regarding the European Commission because for Horizon Europe to deposit in a trusted repository. Um, so um, that's a very good question. So um, I think also Peter. Um, yes. Yeah. So we can consider. So when we we, we talk about uh, trusted repositories, um, so there is um, there is we can have a discussion about that for sure. Uh, repositories that are uh, part of for the time being. I think this this we should should be the approach. I think we all aim to have in the future um, seals. Uh, that uh, clearly state uh, the, how trustful is that the specific repository. But I think we can understand now that uh, for sure the Commission will follow uh, uh, an orientation that is um, all repositories that are part of the directories accepted by the communities and part of uh, open air. Uh, are considered uh, trustful repositories. This is uh, my understanding. This is the understanding from from Open Air. Things are evolving. Um, currently, it's not mandatory to have a specific seal, uh, for example. Um, but maybe in the future. But currently, we don't have it. And for sure, to Jordan, I think, and you are part of the community, you may have also an opinion. Uh, repositories that are part of mainly of the, the main directories that we have, we can say 
Re3 Data, Open Door, um, uh, Fair Sharing, for sure, they are repositories that are uh, trustful repositories, uh, repositories that are part of Open Air, are validated by Open Air and, 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 and part of the Open Air infrastructure, are repositories that the Commission can consider trustful to, to, um, to have the outputs from the funded projects. This is uh, what we can say. Things are evolving, and for sure, uh, we will have more details. Even the mandate from the Commission need some more guidance for some specifications. Uh, I'm not sure if they will provide more guidance on this level of, 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 of trustfulness, but um, for the time being, I think this is quite difficult. Uh, um, what we need to have, so, and uh, to have some more information to Jordan if we don't have any other questions. So, uh, this is a journey. Uh, the, the verification, this this compliance with fair indicators, uh, fair metrics, uh, uh, improving the operability of of, of, the, of of repositories, it's a journey. Um, for some, are, it's a long journey. For others, it's a short journey. It's a journey that needs to be inclusive. So, if we start to have kind of uh, of a clear uh, orientation what is considered a trusted repository we will not be part we will we are not contributing to a good journey and we are not being inclusive so the principles uh, that at least I, I was part of the EOSC fair working group that have contributed with the uh, uh, recommendations about the certification of of, uh, of of EOSC service providers and the EOSC repositories etc and uh, one of the recommendations was that uh, because this is a journey, we need to be inclusive. So there is a, a journey to to ensure that everyone improves the interoperability, everyone improves the, the fairness of, of the repository, the fairness of the digital objects, etc. So let's stay calm. This is my, my clear opinion. Let's stay calm and then trust in some of the tools that are part of the community, like the directories, and then do the do our path. I hope that this is a, a good answer for you, Jordan. <laughs> and partially my opinion and partially also the, the view of open air. <laughs> you have another so, question in the, in the chat. Yeah, uh, Julian. Thank you for it your question. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, um, it was a good suggestion from, from Alessandra. So um, if their repository uh, has uh, a good uh, fair assessment in open air, um, it would be received a badge. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Uh, very good. Um, very good suggestion. I think this is. Uh, but 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 for that we need to be confident. I think this is a very good suggestion, Alexander. But we need to be confident of what we are offering, and uh, to be confident, it must be yeah. from from our team, and must be also from the. The feedback that we receive from you, but uh, but many thanks, and I think it's something that we for sure we can follow and, and see. And Julian, as I didn't saw the comment from Alexander previous, but so Julian, I have a question, but it's not related with the topic, okay? But we can reply. So every every every. Yes. So do we have news about the new? Use interface pro for provider interface. I'm thinking about the ability to decline, accept, ignore the enrichment suggested. Will it come for uh, this space? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, the for this space uh, for for this is for this space um, for this space. Chris, it's available. Uh, for this space seven uh, will be made available. The same approach can be done for this space version six, uh, but someone from the community need to to integrate this. Um, I can say that in, you know, in Portugal we are uh, thinking to contribute uh, as we are going to 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 give some. Um, 
uh, some um, as we are going to update versions of this space that we host in our national network of repositories we uh, may be avail available to work on this at least we are pushing for that let's see <laughs> if we can use it or not okay so and there's a question from Milan um, this is a good question thank you um, yes we uh, the question was to um, will you combine guidelines for literature and data repositories into one guideline uh, we export our metadata accordingly to both yes that is what we see in the last uh, years um, that uh, we have we collect metadata from the literature OIE endpoint and also from data site uh, or data uh, OIE endpoint and we're thinking about to have an umbrella for our guidelines uh, not especially for literature or data so also for uh, software and other research products um, to fit uh, the needs and to, to generalize these um, guidelines into one and have special parts for, uh, if you like, literature, if you like, data repositories and so on. So yes, we are thinking about this and to have um, a clear view to uh, on the guidelines. So that you don't choose uh, one of the guidelines in the validator also um, or in the registration process. So as I as, um, present before in the, in the in one slide, in institutional and arithmetic repository, there are a lot of uh, research output at the moment. And um, I think we can combine and uh, have an umbrella for this. Okay, many thanks. So uh, we need to we need to close this um, this uh, community call. So uh, I think we can we can give more some more minutes. But Andreas, I, I leave the floor to you and to Paula to close the meeting. I need to move to another webinar that I am in fact managing and I have already opened, which is not uh, easy. <laughs> uh, so so. We can close the, if you have any comments, I think what all, what we mentioned here is quite uh, relevant. Uh, so this is a process. Paula, uh, I leave the floor to you to close the, the community call and for Andreas to reply to any other questions. But usually we close it on time, so feel free to close it whenever you want, but I just need to leave many thanks for joining this call. Everyone if you have is more questions, also. we have some more time to, to, to close. Thank you, Pedro. So the last was to request for comments on our latest guideline version. Um, and also um, we want to hear from your side, uh, your ideas or your um, um, tufts about this. And please until uh, 20 of June. Um, so afterwards we would like to go forward to make a final version um, on these guidelines. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much for joining today. And I would like also uh, thank you, my colleague uh, Jochen Schierwagen. He's uh, done a lot of work on these fair assessments. Thank you very much.